element 116 was named at the same time as element 114. 116 has the name Livermorium after the Lawrence Livermore Lab in the United States. It's quite surprising that an element discovered in Russia should be given a name after a town or a lab in the United States. But there's a really good reason. As you've probably seen us demonstrating several times already, that you make super heavy elements by taking the nucleus of a heavy element and the nucleus of a lighter one and banging them together and eventually they stick. So you have the lighter one incorporated in the nucleus of the heavy one. And in the case of element 116, the light element was calcium, which is element number 20. So the heavy one has to be element number 96. And 96 is one of the transuranium synthetic elements, curium, named after Madame Curie. It is an element that does not occur naturally, but it differs from elements like 116, where only a heavy few atoms have been made, because you can make a small lump of curium. Not you can't make tons of it, but you can make some of it. They're made in nuclear reactors by bombardment of one element after another. I think it's probably made by neutron bombardment of plutonium and then a lot of purification. And in this particular case, the curium for the experiment was made in America and flown to Russia where they did the experiment. So it really was international collaboration. And therefore, in honor of this, the um, Russian and US teams who combined together decided to call it Livermorium. That seems very generous to me, Professor. That, that feels like someone winning a car race and then sharing the trophy with the person that fueled up their car. No, it's like somebody winning a car race and sharing a prize with a car designer. So without the curium, there'd be no element 116. So I think it's quite fair. What's more, it honours the lab rather than the name of a person. As I mentioned in an earlier video, the Lawrence Livermore Lab was originally an atomic weapons laboratory founded at the height of the Cold War. When Russia and the United States were almost at war and were enemies. And therefore, this is really a very good symbol of peace. Nobody knows what the chemistry of element 116 would be like. It will be like the chemistry of polonium. And polonium itself is a highly radioactive element. So chemists like me don't really know much about the chemistry of polonium. I suspect that as most elements are metallic at the bottom of the periodic table, that element 116, if you could get enough atoms all together at the same time, would also be metallic. But like the other elements at this part of the periodic table, the real importance of element 116 is to study how it decays and for physicists to understand the forces that hold together these really large nuclei. In some ways, I think it is easier to understand these forces than with the more conventional elements, like sodium, where everything is held so tightly that you can't easily watch them decay. When you talk about this, do you feel that you're talking chemistry or talking physics? I suppose in some ways I'm talking physics, but I'm a chemist, so I'm not sure if chemists can talk physics. And it is part of our periodic table. And by our, I don't mean chemists, but I mean everybody's periodic table. And even chemists need to know how these elements are synthesized and why they're important. Can I ask you a question? Would you rather have an element named after you or win a Nobel Prize? Well, I think that's, that's a very interesting question. 
and probably completely theoretical, and I'm not really a theoretician. However, I think it would be a bit unfair to have an element named after oneself if you hadn't actually done some work towards it. I'm a Seaborg discovered elements, Meitner and all these other people. Um, Copernicus didn't, elements hadn't been discovered, but he was a great scientist anyway. But in general, I think if it is going to be a name of, of a modern scientist, it has to be the name of somebody that's made a real contribution to this area of science. Just like I would feel a complete fraud if somebody named a mountain after me, unless I claim being the first person to climb to the top. And here's one final little fact that even the professor didn't know when we were making this video. And that is that Livermore in California was actually formerly known as Nottingham. And of course, for those of you who don't know or see the logos at the end of all our videos, our films are actually based at the School of Chemistry at the University of Nottingham. So, who knows, maybe if they'd stuck with that original name, the lab would have been called the Lawrence Nottingham Labs, and we'd be making a video today about Nottingham making it onto the periodic table. But of course that didn't happen, and we've got Livermorium. <laughs>